Hello and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition's Codex. So this is going to be a short episode, I think we only have two Codex entries this time. Groups. The Dalish Elves. I took the road north from Val Royale towards Navarre with a merchant caravan. A scant two days past the Elysian border we were beset by bandits. They struck without warning from the cover of trees, hammering our wagons with arrows, killing most of the caravan guards instantly. The few who survived the arrow storm drew their blades and charged into the trees after our attackers. We heard the screams muffled by the forest and then nothing more of those men. After a long silence, the bandits appeared. Elves covered in tattoos and dressed in hides, they looted all the supplies and valuables they could carry from the merchants and disappeared back into the trees. These, I was informed later, were the Dalish. The wild elves who lurk in the wilderness on the fringes of settled lands, preying upon travellers and isolated farmers. These wild elves have reverted to the worship of their false gods and are rumoured to practice their own form of magic, rejecting all human society. From In Pursuit of Knowledge, the travels of a Chantry Scholar by Brother Genitivi. This is a very similar codex entry to the one in Origins. Um, don't know if it's the same one. But it gets the same point across. Um, yep, we only have one creature. The Gurgit. The Chant of Light claims that the Maker made us, and in our folly we think ourselves blessed by such fact. If fact it is, for in my seeking, I find only base illusions, the better for being torn down and mocked as inadequate in the harsh light of reason. But, as an exercise, let us say that it is true that the Maker made us. I have seen the Gurgit basking in the slanted shaft of sunlight in the penumerable canyon, its putrescent ton tongue scenting the rancid air of nameless and un nameable swamp, swishing the uncaring grass of plains with its passage. It is the cousin to is the cousin of the wyvern, but bereft of the savage ferocity for which the latter is praised and hunted by Elysian nobles. Its thick lidded eyes stare witlessly, and its jaw hangs agape. It is not befuddled or frustrated by want of reason, but perfectly content, a drooling idiot. Its pallid be belly stretches and descends, disdaining all reason when it gorges itself upon its prey. I have seen such a lowly beast swallow a chevalier whole, the great and shining warrior taken by surprise in the tall grass. His silvery armour gleaming as the Gurgit unhinged its jaw to draw the chevalier in. Across its belly I saw the kicks and struggles grow frenzied and then still, and the idiot beast settled into a happy toper. The ruined armour of the noble chevalier lay among the Gurgit's spur several days later. Say that it is true that the Maker made us. What if he made us for food? What if the grand purpose of of our searching existence is to stretch the belly of a beast that slinks through the tall grass. What if there is a single unbending purpose and in it we are cattle to feed the witless leviathans that slumber unseen beneath us? From An Anatome of Various ter Terrible Beasts by Baron Harvard Pierre de Amortisan. Maker makes us check behind him for Gurgits at all times. He is he also carries a very sharp stick. Footnote in the margins of the manuscript by the Baron Scribe Dunwich. I really like the um, where they get where they have the in-depth view of them, and then they have like just a normal person's view of them. That's kind of cool. Yeah, Gurgits are weird-looking creatures. And that is it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.